so I, I, as a father, have come to the conclusion that smartphones are dangerous to children. And rather infamously now, I don't let my children have smartphones because I just don't think it's good for them. How old are your kids? Uh, 13, 7, and 2. Yeah, so I've got a 13 and an 8, and they don't have smartphones. Very they're they're allowed to use them if I'm there, Yeah, but that's it. But they don't just sit on their smartphone all day in their, in their room, in the dark, going through God knows whatever. No, they're allowed to have them, and they stay on the side, being charged where we can see them. Mm. And actually, that common sense approach seems to work. It's a much, much more... I mean, I'm more tyrannical than you are. Then. Right. They don't even have them. You know, they don't even get them with me. Um, but this this is, I think, an issue whose time has come because mm. a lot of people are very concerned about this. Mm. But anyway, before we first get into it, if you want to support us, go to thelicities.com, sign up, five for a month, and go check out uh, this deep thing by Thomas Dowling on why feminists won't talk about OnlyFans. Mm. Uh, OnlyFans being a social media app, as it were, that is also a, a thing of great concern, I would suggest. And of course, feminists and generally the, the commentariat don't want to touch any of this. Mm. But this issue was raised recently by Kate Winslet, which I think is a very good thing for her to have done. Uh, she's concerned about social media use, and of course social media primarily being done through smartphones yeah. kind of ties the two issues together. Um, she thinks that the government should make social media firms enforce age limits to tackle the impact on children's mental health. What do you reckon? Well, I mean, it's virtually impossible to do. So in a previous life, um, I edited a TV show mm -hmm. um, called um, Porn on the Brain for Channel 4. And we looked at porn addiction ostensibly in young lads. Now, at the mm -hmm. time, the kind of social script was porn is toxifying men. It's yeah. making them sort of uh, sex zombies and you know, rapists in waiting. And actually what we did, we did a brain scan study at Cambridge University with 21 young lads who were using tons and tons of porn. I mean, like 19 times a day they, they were doing it hardcore what we found was something far more interesting and that was they were just addicted to the cycle yeah of porn that that dopamine cycle mm. that instant hit you know there's no better way to get that than via you know, the orgasm mm. but it, the medium was the phone and i think what's happening now is that young lads were the early adopters mm. And then came Instagram, mm. then came the constant pressure on young women and that's why i think kate winslet is 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 right say this is a huge problem it is a huge problem and the and there are other problems rather than just addiction as well which we'll get into in a minute but in fact let's begin there smartphones are addictive mm. um as psychology today tell us uh essentially they're triggering the sort of survival mechanisms yeah. of our brain constantly by releasing dopamine and oxytocin um Constantly. No, normally you'd get these things from a, a great success in a hunt mm. or evading a predator or something like that. But instead now you've got a constant flooding of these chemicals into your brain because your phone can give you a release of them. Yeah, and actually Facebook know this. Yes, they And do. they have known it for years. I mean, back in, a, again, a previous life when I was on Sky News in the paper reviews years ago, this would often come up. And their own studies show, they yeah. know. Yeah. And actually they like that. Well, they, they pretend they don't. A bit like you know, a gambling sites say, just be careful when the fun stops. Stop. They don't mean that. They're, they're entirely in their business model is entirely incentivized around making sure that people stay on their site or on their app as much as possible. Mm, of course, in is. order to increase ad revenue. Share. Yeah, and all of those those dopamine highs that existed before smartphones, like gambling mm -hmm. or porn yep. or whatever it may be, or cocaine or yep. booze, have now been channeled towards the smartphones. So we have this perfect storm, I think, mm. of of addiction, and it's a real thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it, the, the, the smartphone presents like uh, extra aspects of issue with it as well. Because, I mean, with things like gambling, at least you can go broke. Mm. You can't gamble anymore. With mm. cocaine, at least you can run out or have, you know, uh, a sort of physical revulsion to it eventually when it's making you sick or something like that. But the problem with the smartphone is it doesn't have any calories. It doesn't cost you any extra money. It's just always there and always on, and you're always scrolling. And it manifests itself into real-world issues, not just in terms of addiction, but um, uh, um, Catherine Burblesing, who's you know, Britain's most robust head teacher and wins mm. awards for it, she told me that 90% of all problems in schools are caused by social media, people falling out about posts and all we'll that. We'll get into that in a minute, yeah. actually, if that's all right, because uh, you are completely right, in, as far as I can tell. Uh, so the BBC put out uh, an article talking about this, being like, okay, look, studies have shown that actually huge numbers of young people are just physically addicted to their mobile phones. Yeah. Uh, this is not good. The... the um, 
the British Medical Journal of Psychiatry or something like that, published uh, an, an analysis of 41 studies, which covered 42,000 young people in their investigation into problematic smartphone usage. And they came across, uh, they, they came away from it saying, well, almost a quarter of young people are so dependent on their smartphones that it becomes like an addiction and they become panicky or upset if they are denied constant access. Not even like, you know, they not having them taken away from them. If they can only have periodic access to the thing, yeah. they become panicky and anxious. And, and a, a part of this, that the addictive cycle is the, the prefrontal cortex, you know, mm. jumping out in, into the brain sort of physiology. And that part of the brain that says, is this a good idea? Should I be doing this? Isn't online until you're about 24. Yeah. And so we see that young people are much more receptive to addiction. But in the meantime, Somebody outside of them has to be that part of the brain, a teacher, an adult, a parent, a parent and say, hang on a minute, no. Children need to n understand the power of the word no. And every, every parent will be able to tell you that children are not good at self-regulation when they've got something they enjoy. They'll do it for a long time to their own detriment. It's and not they will do it more if you tell them not to. Uh, yes, unless you physically prevent them, yeah. Um, so uh, the... The, the study found that 23% uh, of young people were just, as far as they could determine, just openly addicted mm. as if they were on some sort of major drug. Um, and that's uh, pretty terrible. Uh, you know, they have anxiety about not being able to use it. They can't moderate the time they spend using it. And it was detrimental to other activities that they should be doing. So it's yeah. totally unhealthy. Totally new, totally unhealthy. Yeah. And uh, so there, there are a series of like apps that are designed to try and break your attention span on the mobile phone. But of course, who's using those? Well, it's not 14-year-olds, is it? You know, yeah, it, and it's it, interesting how the way of getting off a smartphone is an app on a smartphone. I was going to bring that up. Yeah, yeah, good point <laughs> out. It's like there's something mildly ironic about, like, okay, well, I've got an app to try and get me to reduce my smartphone usage. Yeah, stop using apps by using an app. Yeah, I don't think that's the way to do it. Um, but this this, this is a major problem, as you can imagine. I mean, they uh, cite a survey of 4,150 British adults in 2017 in this article in which, in, even, again, in 2017, so, you know, five years ago, 38% of British adults were like, yeah, I'm using my smartphone too much. And 16 to 24-year-olds, that's more than half, mm. uh, who are like, yeah, I definitely use it too much. So they know that it's, it, again, like, you know, when you're smoking too much, or you're drinking too much, people know that they're using their smartphones too much. And let's be fair, I'm probably guilty of it, you're probably guilty of yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, everyone's guilty of it. But at the end of the day, we're adults, so no one is responsible for our behavior, we're responsible for our own behavior. However, when it comes to children... Mm. They're not adults. They do not have to take responsibility for their behavior. Yeah. The parents do. And in internet years, 2017 is a lifetime ago. Yes. I mean, I, I would think it'd be much, much more than that now, Cole. It quite probably is. But let's go back to 2014 when smartphones became first popularized. Parents, of course, had no idea what smartphones were because they weren't raised with them. These were just new things that turned up. And uh, the, uh, the parents, 20% of parents didn't even monitor what their children were doing online at that point. Mm. And that's crazy because the child literally has access to everything on the internet. Yeah, and, th and that's a huge kind of knowledge base gap amongst parents. And also, getting back to porn, it, it, parents always compare stuff now to what they knew and understood. Yes. Oh, it's like Razzle in a, in, yeah. in a, in a hedge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, no, it's not like that anymore. No. It's, it's quite different. No, it's way worse. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and in terms of what you can access via the internet, you know, it's, you know, people, Parents say, oh, they can order a pizza. Yeah. No, no, my friend. They can order much more than that. Yes. And it's and, and you, you the, the comparisons when we were lads, mm. and yeah, you, you'd find a porn magazine in a bush. And like, okay, what do you get to see? Boobs. Yeah. Right? That's that's pretty milk toast. It's pretty uh, inoffensive. It's probably not going to destroy your perception of women or mm. sex. Whereas what's on the internet Yeah. Doesn't and even bear repeating. And I saw, I witnessed that change. So, in case in case viewers aren't aware, I edited a load of magazine mm. for ten years, and, and you know the lads' mags, you know, were were obliterated by the feminist critics. I'm sure we'll come into that in a bit, but they would wish those magazines back in a heartbeat oh, yeah. compared to what came <laughs> oh, yeah. after them. Okay, yeah, the 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 irony is careful what you wish for. Yeah. Are loaded objectifying women. It's like yes, but. It's not doing it in a in a way that makes you think that women are just worthless. You know, mm. the, the women are actually the the centerpiece and valued in the in the magazine's sort of you know spread. But it's just not like that now. It's, and that it's, ties back to your OnlyFans piece. So are we going to talk about that? Or uh, no, we're not going to talk yeah. about it. But you are you're exactly right. Yeah, because exactly what happened at that time was for like working class young women who had 
credentials mm-hmm. and wanted to make themselves a livelihood, use them. Yeah. And the middle class feminists hated it. Mm. And I was on stage with like Katie Price um, and Laura yeah. Bates, Everyday Sexism, and, and the No More Page 3 crew. And Katie Price said, I'm a feminist. It's my body, it's my choice. Well, the head's rotated. This is empowering for me. Yeah. Because it is. It made her rich and famous. It was it, it was her choice. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's go back to this, uh, because one of the major problems with smartphones, which again is just not something you would have thought about mm-hmm. had you come from sort of our generation, uh, is that actually this means that the bullying never stops. Yes. Yeah. Because it, when we were lads, okay, you went to school, maybe you did get bullied or something like that, but at least you went home. Yeah. At least that was it. You know, at least you, you got to do what you want and you weren't being perpetually stalked by your bully. Uh, but no, the now, um, as, as they say here, it's hard to escape. And almost everyone has as, as access to the internet. Mm. And not only is the information always online, so anyone can see it any time and any place, so it's never really forgotten. But, uh, but that means that the people who are bullying you are not only people who are able to message you at any point, but also it's people you don't even know. Yeah. You know, you get the attention of like, you know, groups and areas of the internet who just enjoy that sort of thing. Yeah. And, and it's a very, very real thing. And I think a lot of the time people think, oh, you know, stop being so controlling, you know, stop being so censorious, yeah. but it has a real world manifestation. And as I said, you know, um, speak to switch on heads and they are, they are stopping um, ch- children allowing to have them um, have yeah. phones in schools now. And that's the right thing to do. I think um, so. Surrender them when they come in. Yeah. Uh, the parents complain about it. Well, tough. S- send your kids somewhere else. Your, your children do not need their mobile phone when they're at school. No, they, they should not need it. They've got no reason for it. They do not need it. Yeah. Um, and then they point out that, look, it's actually more invasive than face-to-face interaction as mm-hmm. well. And everyone's seen this through the use of, say, Twitter, that everyone is so disrespectful yeah. to one another it was okay okay you're being bullied but you know if the kid starts crying maybe the bullied. okay i've gone too far mm. you know but when you don't see mm. the facial expressions of the person that you're talking to well that sort of level of empathy is broken anyway moving on the police are well aware of the fact that child predators use the internet yeah. to contact children because the children have access to the internet and there's literally nothing stopping them from getting in contact with them that seems like a problem to me yeah, and, and again, it, it really is. And who would have thought that, that predators will, will use any new technology or means possible to access imagined, their yeah. prey? Yeah. It's like the trans debate. You know, if, if if you're allowed suddenly to be a bloke in a women's space, some people will abuse it. Yes. If you're a paedophile and you go into a children's space by technology, of course, some people will abuse it. I mean, why are people surprised about this? Yeah, and children hardly have the sort of uh, life experience or knowledge to know that they are being groomed or being targeted. And... They can, uh, they can end up falling into um, patterns of behaviour that they don't even realise is damaging themselves mm. until it's far too late. Yeah. And uh, the, the Nottingham Police, I think, or North Yorkshire Police, sorry, uh, just have been trying to warn parents, like, look, all of these apps that you think are fairly innocent actually are, are gateways to child predators who, and, and in some terms are organized uh, who know that they can just message your children and start getting them to do things so of course all of these phones have cameras on them as well mm. which is again something of a concern mm. uh, they give a list but one of them being instagram which is actually a real problem uh, we know that instagram is for example making young women very depressed yeah yeah and it's, it's this constant sort of um, you know immersion in perfection Yes. Or, or the perfection of others, or at least you get the best takes of other people's yeah. lives, which may be faked or filtered or whatever. But it's, it's not even that it's fake. It's just you don't see the the good and the bad. Yeah. You only see the good. Yeah. So you come away with a mistaken impression that, oh, that person's perfect. And mm. I, I saw a documentary a while ago of like the Instagram influencer and how this one woman would set up for like six hours to get this one yeah. shot of herself yeah. at a particular angle. And then your average teenage girl is just like, oh, my God. Yeah, my, my barber, Sean, he's he's working class Irish bloke, and his daughter won't even leave the house without doing her makeup. Like, she takes about an hour and ten, just to go and get a pint of milk. Why, why is that? That's In crazy. case somebody puts her on Instagram, it literally is controlling everything they do outside of the home and yeah. inside. And you know, this is not just kind of, you know, molly coddling parents. It is a real thing. Yep. Um, last September, a Facebook whistleblower uh, told the Wall Street Journal that um, – they knew that Instagram was negatively impacting teen girls' body image. Yep. Uh, this, I mean, everyone seems to be surprised to learn this, but actually young women are very, very um, insecure about their bodies and images normally, I, I think is a fair way to put it. Yep. And unsurprisingly, this is having a long-term negative impact on young women. Mm-hmm. And one of the 
problems that it has is it's encouraging um, a kind of weird cult-like behavior in which young women tend to join groups that are basically negative. Uh, for example, as the BBC reported, there are, there's a rise of sort of suicide mm. groups and yeah. self-harming groups. Yeah, that, uh, yes. So, so what we're seeing is is these things kind of always existed in young women, but yeah, they are gravitating towards people who, who yeah. in effect, become their support networks for bad behaviour. Yes. So I've I've got an eating disorder. Um, I think I might be trans. Oh, wow! There's some other people yeah. who think like me. Therefore, that's okay. It's not okay. Mm. It's reinforcing bad decisions and yeah. bad life choices. But that's what it's doing. And it, the 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 problem as well. Again, because of the sort of virtual nature of the internet, the self selection allows yeah. a much larger number of people to arrive in a particular group than if it was in a, a local town. You know, you might have one person who mm. agreed with you in that town, mm. but otherwise, you wouldn't get any constant reinforcement for these very detrimental things. Um, the there's a the a police briefing was uh, revealed by the BBC last year, saying that uh, peer to peer influence increased suicidal ideation amongst children involved to the extent that several escalated to suicide crises and serious self harm. And Instagram themselves, Facebook and Instagram, if, if you acknowledge that this is happening and trying to introduce you know AI bots to recognize self-harm and suicide content on the app and the 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 famous example of this in britain is of molly russell yeah. who killed herself in 2017 um because she had essentially got sucked down a rabbit hole on instagram of depression and suicide and so she was just up in her room constantly consuming this terrible content and she killed herself. It's a really sad story, but I think I think it's one we, we can learn from um, in a positive way. And like every parent watching this, you know, needs to understand that this could be going on to their child. We hear this about things like Shemima yeah. Begum, and you know, you know kids yeah. are radicalised and groomed uh, in all sorts well, of ways. Well, Shemima Begum didn't have a mobile phone. How has she been contacted by ISIS? Right. So, so I think that is that is you know instrumental for us all. Just don't let kids have their devices in their bedrooms. Yeah. To, to, to me, that, <laughs> yeah. That, that's really straightforward. <laughs> yeah, if, I mean, if you if you can't go as far as I go and just forbid them from just having the devices, make sure they only have them when they're in your presence. Yeah. That's, you know, at the very least. I mean, there, there, are, there are unfortunately loads of other examples of children committing suicide. Mm. For example, in Malaysia, one teenage girl uh, put on her Instagram account a poll saying, should she kill herself? 69% of people voted that she should, and so she did. It's pretty awful, isn't it? Yeah, but it, again, I think it, it, it underlines this, this sense of kind of um, separation from mm. reality that, that you know, the online world gives us. I mean, you get a load of trolling. I get loads of trolling. Mm. Um, I understand I'm old enough and ugly enough to, to get it, but I, I, if I was a teenager... That's because you've be, been through the real world. That's right. You know, this it, is something that came to you later in your adult life. And, you know, you yeah. must have been like well into your 30s and 40s yeah. before you first got a mobile phone. Right? A tweet isn't a punch. Yeah, exactly. But a poll saying kill yourself if you're a teenager is very, very real. And especially if so much of your world is an online world, like so much of your social interactions are actually now online, mm. then you do end up in these really quite extreme uh, positions. I mean, one uh, 13-year-old in Bengal uh, committed suicide instead of being uh, after being told to do his homework and told that he couldn't use his mobile phone. So he hanged himself. It just, I mean, it seems utterly ridiculous, doesn't it? Yeah. And I mean, hopefully these are just extreme cases, of course. Well, ho hopefully. But uh, if you get, get to the next one, John, you can see the, uh, the Indian mm. Express reporting on this. Um, you know, the, the, and they, they're like, look, the parents weren't beating or abusing him. They were saying, hand over the mobile phone and finish his homework because it was getting late. And so he went and hanged himself. It's just ridiculous. I mean, that's just, if that's not a sign of extreme addiction, I don't know mm. what it is, right? Yeah. There was an Italian girl who committed suicide at 13 because she was removed from a WhatsApp group as a joke. As in the people just teasing her, oh, would it be funny? And then she she killed herself over this. Yeah, because that kind of sense of like social isolation, you know, being ostracized, you know, via mm. social media, feels like a real world thing. Exactly. If you're immersed in it so long, it's yeah. the same as as the real yeah. world. And you're you're like we were saying, your your brain is constantly swimming in various uh, pleasure releasing chemicals, and then suddenly all of that's drained away, and yeah. suddenly you're you're sort of flung into this emotional black hole. Yeah. Um, there was another. A uh, twelve-year-old who live-streamed her own suicide, uh, which is just awful. Uh, and so, basically, I'm I'm at the point where I just don't think children should have access to smartphones and social media. Yeah, I, I think even the most well, you know, not liberal, but you know, we we are switched on to this, and yeah, yeah we spent a lot of time immersed in this. But as you say, we were adults when we came to this kind of platform. But there's no real good that comes of it. Mm. I mean, you know. 
I, I allow my kids to, to speak to their friends, but I'm in the room and I can overhear them. It's often quite yeah. tedious you know, to hear this yeah. like nonsense about <laughs> Minecraft, whatever it is. But at least I'm, yeah. I'm there, yeah. not spying. I'm just, I'm just mindful. You're being present. Yeah, That's like fine. I wasn't allowed a TV in my room when I was a kid. No. Where the hell are yeah, kids no, allowed no. smartphones or the internet? In the room? It just makes no sense. So parents, I think, need to, need to step up and grow a pair and just be a bit more firm. Yeah, I agree with Kate Winslet. To yeah, be honest, I do, and, I, and, I, and I've never, I think, ever said that in my life. <laughs> yeah, I'm most liberal, you know, lovey <laughs> you'll find. You know. Sure, but on this, she's she's got the parents' perspective, which is absolutely right. I put a poll up on Twitter. I saw it uh, to see who who agreed. If you can get the next one, John, you can see uh, by the time of closing, thirty four thousand votes, and eighty four point six percent were like, no, they shouldn't have access to smartphones and social media. Five point eight percent said yes, which I mean, why? Mm. <laughs> I didn't. I, I was reading through the comments, and I didn't see anyone actually defending the yes position. Uh, I think for your audience, who are like very tech savvy, mm. you know, very liberal minded, very switched on, that that is a is a conclusive and overriding result, and that's yeah. because they've they've looked at the evidence, they understand. Yeah. I think that's the position to take. They they know exactly what yeah. the problems are. Yeah. Um, I, I saw a bunch of people saying, well, maybe they should have access to uh, dumb phones, which is not a bad idea. The like Nokia think, bricks. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. The old Nokias, where all you can do is telephone and text message. Yeah. And that's that's that would, I mean, be, that would be a massive step towards uh, a better situation for these young people, I think. Yeah, uh, but uh, I mean, the thing is, that those phones have like really gone up in value. I've still got a few of those phones. Oh, have they? Yeah, in, in my bottom drawer. Yeah, because the, the battery used to last all week. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was great. You could just like yeah. waste off your life yeah. looking at tweets. Yeah. So yeah, it's, um, but yeah. Basically, children don't really need social media. It's bad for them. It is. And they shouldn't have it, and almost everyone agrees with that position. So anyway. And the people who work in tech definitely agree with that position. Uh, well, that, ah, damn, I you know? forgot to get that yeah. up. Because Even Zuckerberg and, Apple. and yeah. Apple, they don't let their children have any of their devices or apps. Until they're about 14, 15, yeah. you know, minimum. Yeah. So, so they get it and they make this stuff. Exactly. And if, if you know, who who's, whose opinion are you going to take? You know, you don't have to take my opinion. Take the people who are producing this kind of poison. Yeah, because they you know. know. Yeah. They are well aware. Mm. Thanks for watching that segment from the podcast Lotus Eaters, and I hope you're all having a very Merry Christmas so far. If you'd like to find more, you can subscribe over at our website, lotuseaters.com, for £5 a month to gain access to all of our wonderful premium content, including this recent article that I wrote on individualism and collectivism and how it's a false dichotomy between the two. If you'd like to learn more about what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, you can follow me over at Getter at Harry Lotus Eater. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.